हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ पॉडकास्ट दिस इज चंदन पलवार फ्रॉम ग्रो जंक्शन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अ गोना बिल साइटफुल ऑपरेशंस एंड सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट फोकस्ड पॉडकास्ट दैट इज पावर्ड बाय ग्रो जंक्शन टुडे वी हैव वन वन ऑफ एन एमिनेंट पर्सनालिटीज विद अस मिस्टर अरुण सरवना कुमार ही इज इज ही इज अ लीडर विद वास्ट हैंड्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड सप्लाई चेन इन द कंज्यूमर गुड्स इंडस्ट्री ही इज आल्सो स्किल्ड इन लीडिंग एंड मैनेजिंग चेंज manufacturing and operational excellence supply chain optimization demand planning inventory management customer service and sales support he is currently serving as a director or general manager at l'oreal he graduated from niti mumbai either national institute of industrial engineering and have completed his pgdim logistics materials and supply chain management in 2005 so i think we can you know we can have uh, like we can u- unite together and welcome mr arun on board with us hey, thank you so much sir uh, such a kind introduction um, it's fun to be here and uh, having this interaction i look forward to it wow like uh, so before beginning this particular podcast i just need to know how are you doing in your life in your in this uh, you know trying times it's uh, it's actually been um, thankfully uh, with a lot of gratitude i say this it's it's been a blessed period uh, we have not had any issue from a health point of view etc and uh, in fact we've kind of enjoyed the change uh, covid has uh, i think uh, sometimes such events accelerate uh, changes in your life that you would otherwise not uh, anticipate right who would have thought you'd be working from home who would have thought right. that you'd be more time to spend with your family etc etc right 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 so circumstances are not great but i think uh, like i said grateful to be i hope it's like, the same with you true i find it true in fact because you know uh, like this uh, particular trying times have also impacted in a positive manner yeah it's opened up a few opportunities you know that we would have right I think that I think that's life so it always has two sides it depends on what you look at I think you know looking on the positive aspects more you know moving on from those negative things I think that's the only way out for all of us yeah, no, absolutely I think you are right in that manner so I just want uh, to the particular audience to let know that this will be operations based podcast and okay. whosoever is interested in supply chain management to lead in career so Mr Arun is the right guy for you guys so uh, yeah Yeah, happy to, happy to guide in any way. And right. I always happy to talk about this subject. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So I think uh, we before beginning this particular podcast and our one-on-one conversation, I think we want to know more about you. So what exactly I missed upon your introduction? So, uh, so I think I think the introduction is not about being a professional, right? And what maybe I've done, and 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 therefore uh, therefore it reflects. But I think. Yeah. Uh, um i think i'm far cooler than what the what the what the profile talks about uh, i think i have a life beyond profession and, right. and it's, it's fun right. um uh, i think one of the um i i think one of the ways in which uh, you actually have an enriching career is by having a good time off it right okay. so it is equally important that while you are passionate and you're working and kind of making things up in your career it's also equally important that you have you have passions to right. pursue outside of work and uh, and you have a family to go back to you have hobbies to pursue you travel you listen to good music read good books so i think this is an aspect that doesn't come out so evidently in the career i always feel that it, it kind of comes back to influence your career in much more positive ways uh, i'm sure you would have experienced it like you take a break you come back right. to work i think you would you feel that much more excited to to study or to or to do right. something else so So I think that's that's the side of it that that the introduction doesn't usually carry, but it it carries a lot of meaning in everybody's life. Right. So I think uh, you know you are absolutely right in your own terms. So regenerating ourselves, I think that's the optimal solution to increase the productivity of everyone. So yeah. before we start, I think we want to know about why you joined you know NITI uh, Mumbai in way back in uh, you know in two thousand three. and completed your graduation from there and then post then so you are currently in 2022 we are having this podcast you know schedule yeah. so you know we want to hear your journey like from uh, then to here yeah, so, so i think uh, um, i think engineer hap- engineer uh, i think happen more by chance i think like it happens with most of us it's not that <laughs> at the age of 15 16 you are very clear what you want to do right so thankfully i think once i got into engineering and i i kind of had an opportunity to um 
to lead college events i became a general secretary in one of the years uh, to lead the, the the function that i was handling etc and then i think that's where i probably realized that i was more cut out for work around leadership and working with people than probably how much of an interest i was having on the subject of engineering per se okay uh, and that's where i think the the aspiration to do something different happened and maybe one of the things that i'm thankful for myself is uh, maybe in the in the batch in the kind of college that i was graduating from etc it's very rare that people kind of choose a career in mba more or less everybody was into engineering and they were giving their gre etc etc right so yeah, i was just kind of glad that uh, i chose not to necessarily follow all my friends and then do what what my heart told at that point of time and why niti i think it's uh, it's uh, it came down to a matter of uh, elimination between the various the top functions that we have in uh, management if you look at uh, marketing i don't know i was it, it was too out there i, I know you are a marketing professional but, uh, <laughs> but it was i was never correct for that uh, finance i think was too dull um uh, it maybe was very close to engineering so i was left with hr and operations okay operations i thought um, uh, could give me opportunity to work with people also because i think in any any organization that you take even l'oreal the one that i work for i think okay. 30% of workforce upwards are uh, people who are in the operations domain so it actually invariably ends up along with sales maybe the maximum number of people that an organization tends to have right. uh, so i think hsa was a part of it and maybe the engineering kind of helped um, in the sense that the, the science and the math of uh, management is closest in operation and supply chain i think than in any other function right so kind of um, came together and that's how niti happened where it, which is anyway the mecca of supply chain uh, in india as as we call it so that that's how it started Right. The journey since then has been quite uh, quite amazing. Yeah, I think we've had uh, I've had a career where uh, it's not been stagnant. We had a career where I I could after every two three years move into something new, uh, which has which has I, I think kind of helped me with my perspective uh, as well as I think it's it's given me a uh, a lot of enthusiasm to kind of uh, remember fondly what true true what I've gone through. Totally agree that. So I think you know your. any move in your past i think that made you at your present position so yeah, your general manager yeah so your general management at l'oreal i think you made it achieve to that position and i'm sure that you must be having so much you know goals in your life your visions in life more together more up for than this particular position so i think course, yeah yeah so i think i kind of in the half a mark maybe so about 17 18 years of done and if you take the normal retirement age at least so you have, you have uh, another similar period to go so obviously very excited to see what right. so like i'm very excited to begin this particular podcast so let's yeah. have it on board so the th- first thing i think you uh, like the operations interested people or in fact who are not interested in operations do have a confusion between so like operations so what do we mean by operations like what an operational you know executive or a manager is supposed to do and one thing what you know like uh, i am just having a doubt in my mind so supply chain management is it different from uh, the operations part or is, is it same yeah, so let me let me answer first first so see Please. um um So, in, if if you if you look at if you take a business and you strip down everything, the finally, uh, if, especially if it's a product-based company, let's say, finally you will, uh, it it boils down to a business of selling a product. That product comes to you by virtue of everything we do in operation, right? So you cannot not have operation if you are a product-based company. Right? Finally, at the end of the day, if you strip everything, you can you can do it without. If you are a single man, you can do it without HR. if it's a small business you can probably do it without finance if it's like a newspaper you don't have to sell it so you can you can strip off everything but finally you need a product right so the product right. comes from the operation right? <laughs> i think right? you're right so so um so effectively if if you have to put a product into and and if you're sitting in a room you just look around your room and anything that you see has come there because somebody has worked in operation and supply chain which means that you needed a raw material to do it you probably made you need a manufacturing facility to produce it you finally needed some packing material to pack it and right. to so that it gets delivered we needed a, a transportation to kind of get it from one place to another you probably right. had a storage somewhere etc etc so 
this whole chain the value chain of uh, making yeah. a product that you desire reach you is what is uh, okay what is the job of operation supply right. chain okay and if you if you kind of ask it confusion that exists between supply chain and operations and logistics etc there are, there are multiple terms and logistics is easy i think logistics has got to do more with the with the with the part of making sure that the, the good actually gets transported stored somewhere preserved and then and then is issued to you um operations is probably more the manufacturing side of things so if you if you kind of dealing with a factory and then making okay. sure that you know kind of product gets made there is tend to be what organization call as uh, operations and supply chain could probably be the planning side of things um, you know how do you how do you forecast how do you plan for the inventory and how do you make sure who produces where how do you keep it optimized and also a little bit of uh, uh, the procurement side of things to make sure that okay you, you can kind of get the materials that you want etc so i think i think the world of supply chain kind of encompasses what is operation plus what is logistics and then and then a bit of planning so maybe a slightly more global term if you if you really want to use it right But yeah that's more or less the yeah, uh, more or less the differences i think thank you so much you know i just need to appreciate you for clearing this you know a whole mystery okay. mysterious question so the thing is we all were having lots of doubts in between all of these three sure. terms so i think we must be benefited by this particular clarification so before okay. like while you were speaking that you know operations have so much detailed process so from beginning uh, from the uh, you know particular market research in the production of that particular part to the actual marketing part or the uh, you know logistical part maybe the product uh, gets delivered so what Uh, a particular area fascinates you the most in the whole process I mean, everything but then but then uh, maybe i'll pick two okay so okay. i think i think the i think the uh, the core of every supply chain process will be where the product gets produced which is a factory and uh, um i know it's probably the, the least glamorous of everything that we do in uh, supply chain is to kind of be in a factory because what do you imagine is that okay around the clock operation and then we have to, lack of capacity people working seven days a week and stuff like that but if you really want to learn um, you know the ground reality of how right. things happen maybe a factory is a great place to start and i started a career in a factory Perfect. and uh, and i would advise any new budding supply chain uh, uh, professional in the making etc to take that opportunity if you get one uh, because i know there is a glamour of corporate office right If you sit in a corporate office and you feel good, etc., then you strategize, etc. But none of those things will really work if you don't know what the ground reality is. So I think it's a fascinating place to really see. It's also a great place to learn leadership because uh, eventually you're not going to be be an expert in one function, right? You're going to go into a general management like what I've done, and eventually lead right. company at some, um, some point of time. And then and then what's going to matter is the soft skill, the ability to deal with people. I think that's something that you learn a lot when you when you're actually in the factory. So it's true. Let's be from that point of view. True. the other other thing i think is uh, is the um, is the aspect of planning uh, because okay. uh, your supply chain can be super complex if you if you end up in a like if i take an asian pains example i was uh, we used to have about what 2000 odd skus spread okay. over 140 odd depots and then you do a planning for 6 months it kind of means that okay 7 8 lakh line items you have to actually forecast and and then produce oh, okay. 30 okay. different factories that you have and then supply such that you don't have a stock out So it can be a fascinating optimization problem if you have that bent of uh, you know solution orientation in your mind. Right. So uh, so so that's the, and, and then there are and, and there are so much technology that can come and actually help you there. Uh, so it can it can also be a uh, fascinating. So I think these these two I personally like, but yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's just getting very... right. Right. I think you was you know saying you are framing the answer in a perfect manner. because uh, you know while you were speaking so i was just fascinating about the roles and responsibilities of a general manager at a company like l'oreal sure. so what's your opinion in that so see uh, the role uh, if i may if i may talk a little bit about the role so the way l'oreal l'oreal is a multinational organization and we um, we Don't operate in one country, right? We operate in around 140, 150 companies in all. Uh, so I, I belong to a zone called SAPMI now, which is like South Asia, Pacific, Middle East, North Africa, and it kind of spans over 14, 15 countries. So there are there are requirements in uh, multiple 
areas uh, from a cosmetic point of view in this so it could, it could be your hair care shampoos and stuff like that i can't talk much about it but uh, hair color again not applicable to me but there is color and there is shampoo kind of stuff and there is also skin care there is makeup sorry <laughs> no 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 i just made it laugh so the thing is my uh, audio was kept mute so i was laughing i, I thought oh, yeah, yeah sure sure, sure. <laughs> so, yeah so i i may not be a great brand ambassador from that point of view at least hair care and high color but uh, but there's makeup is there's skin care etc etc so there is there is a lot of product ranges i mean portfolio exactly. and there are about 40 odd countries which require these uh, these device in various quantities okay there are there are uh, uh, three four nodal points of manufacturing where most of the planning for how do you kind of service to these places right. the kind of demand that comes across various countries right. happens and then in turn means that okay you're going to import be importing certain raw materials you're going to be exporting finished goods uh, you're going to be um, absorbing the market requirements that come in terms of product changes introducing right. new products into the system and then eventually making sure that you produce and then you you provide it to the customer where the need uh, happens when, when the sales actually has to take place so right. this whole thing for uh, for this region of this 14 uh, countries these four uh, uh, factories at the nodal points uh, kind of take care of so i end up i handle one of them uh, right. which kind of services all these countries for certain product portfolio that's more or less what my uh, job is right uh, from a pure business point of view but of course when you're leading a team when there are people involved uh, when there are facilities involved there are stuff like you, you take care of quality or take care of production or take care of supply chain or take care of environment or take care of safety you have to take care of uh, you know engineering aspects uh, and then finally finance because each of these nodal points is an independent business unit by itself so we have our own yes. profit and loss statements so yes. uh, so my own i work with my own cfo who kind of uh, does that for the for the point so it's it's, um, it's a very end to end kind of a supply chain responsibility that i uh, right i think you obviously should... very exciting challenging <laughs> every day right so i think you are marketed too so you are just you know continuing stay, uh, saying that it's exciting and it's fascinating so that you know viewers of this video just get motivated <laughs> by <laughs> so i think you are a in born like uh, marketed to along with <laughs> operations domain yeah. so that's one advantages of supply chain guy you know you can be the like i can be the marketer i can be the uh, <laughs> hr because i have to anyway deal with people i have to take care of my finances so you kind of cover everything wow okay <laughs> well that's great so i'm sure about it that you must be good at your work and the, the things uh, you know the things your the roles and responsibilities of your position kept you motivated so it keeps you motivated that's the main positive thing in your job so like uh, being a you know operation like being a general manager at a company like l'oreal so i'm sure about it that the organization must be having uh, possible uh, expectations from you so yeah. there must be so many challenges that you must be facing in your entire day so, so from uh, like from 9 am maybe uh, the the time you start the time you end so what are the possible challenges that you believe you encounter in your daily activities uh, so see uh, i think the way it um, maybe from a challenge point of view is it's, it's every day is a challenge and everything um, everything is an opportunity also so it, it depends on how do you look at it Okay. Uh, but um, uh, but I think see if I if I look at some of the uh, major challenges in the job, uh, I think it comes from a very very positive place as far as Mariel okay. is concerned. Uh, we are an organization who's super um, uh, conscious of the um, of the impact that we leave in the world, um, and and it's a beautiful thing because uh, and uh, apart from apart from you know the operation aspect of it. business aspect of it there is a tremendous focus that we have in the uh, in terms of our contribution to sustainability in terms of what we what we leave behind for the mother earth in terms of our contribution to society um, in in things like how do we bring in more diversity inclusion into our work workplace and stuff like that so when an organization is a little ahead of the curve and they're not really only wanting to do uh, what is profitable for the business but also the right thing you you have to kind of spend your day in making some of those things happen right, right? so uh, when when we look at sustainability we want to be completely carbon neutral we want to use absolutely zero water for uh, for our products we want to have 100% recyclable material 
and today maybe the ecosystem in which we operate do not necessarily support it maybe the market is not mature enough and you don't have enough uh, solutions available in the market for you to easily do some of these things so you have to kind of see it's like if, if you are going on a trek right um, you you can kind of uh, follow a beaten path then maybe it's easy right then you follow but sometimes if if you're climbing a mountain for the first time then you have to create your own path right so i think right. the challenge that we face in warrior is in 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 these aspects is more okay. to so when we look at you know lgbtq a++ community inclusion then everything from the point of your value source uh, uh, where do you find the right resource how do you create the policies how do you create a culture how do you make it more inclusive um and and how do you face the challenges of uh, of what comes with with this uh, because people have not done it often enough right there are, there are enough inspirational right. companies right. even in india who have done it but right but these are the kind of uh, areas that we get to work with which is uh, which is exciting because you're doing something that's very positive right it's also challenging because you probably right are, are, are dealing with a bit of vagueness and lack of clarity how to exactly get it done right i think you are absolutely right so the challenges that you're speaking so i think i do agree so being a non you know non operations background so i think these these were the challenges that someone can relate to so what you know being a general manager so what you must be a problem solver definitely so that's why you're the position at <laughs> where where in you are right now so being a problem solver so what are the possible solutions that you believe must help you or anyone in the operations background to deal with such challenges Uh, i think each challenge is different and uh, like in management some of the best answer is uh, is it depends right we say that most of the best answer is it depends it depends on, on the exact problem etc but a few few things i think usually invariably help uh, i think uh, i think it's great to have uh, a community of people who are uh, who are working towards this problem solution so it's not that you are traveling alone Okay. Uh, in order to prove something it's good that you have alignment with your own hierarchy you have alignment with people down uh, and across etc peers and and uh, and stakeholders when you do that i think it becomes a collective movement towards something nice which uh, obviously um, then you draw a lot of energy in your weak moments from people who are obviously uh, also there who are, who are in the same journey right it is also about trusting and empowering people to do things because um, uh, because i think uh, with with a lot of um, um, action areas that we target uh, you would also expect to do a lot lot of heavy lifting and uh, and we should not end up overestimating our own ability to do everything as right. it it's important that i think you you kind of take people along and then you empower them to deliver some of the uh, objectives uh, as you chase okay um, your your um, your goals and um, that i think it just makes it all the more fun you end up building capability to people and then you actually sometimes in fact more often than not i see that people tend to exceed um, what you could have yourself done when you kind of put a few people together to do it i think these are two guiding principles but uh, each solution is different sometimes you have to roll up your sleeves and get working sometimes it it might be about uh, the answer could lie in technology sometimes it could uh, it could lie in uh, certain expertise that you should borrow sometimes it could it could just be a copy paste um, so i think i think process for courses but okay. lastly i would think as long as you build a good community and as long as you, uh, you trust in people and empower them a lot of these things tend to happen uh as smoothly i think you are right so the thing is you the all the three possible you know uh solutions that you gave to us i think those were i think in some sense that could be less you know less costly and more effective possible yeah, solutions absolutely. so i think more the fun best, right it's more fun <laughs> so i think uh, you know keeping you know all the problems aside and uh, keeping the solutions along your side and you know dealing with such challenges in a very uh, you know in a very uh, fun way so i think that's that makes a person unique and that makes the uh, particular job happening sure. that's true i think uh, you know so what's uh, i just want to know, you know i was considering my mind into 
regarding the like with this, this regarding this virtual uh, entire like this is virtual environment so right now there is a huge uh, employment in the augmented reality sector and the virtual reality segment so what's your opinion that that whether the ar and the vr uh, implications on supply chain management so i think i think a lot of ar vr today it's so popular maybe because it's so customer facing and uh, a lot of application even in beauty uh, for that matter uh, in fact l'oreal ourselves we don't call ourselves a beauty company anymore. we call as a beauty tech company and a lot of this front ending of tech especially if you are a customer comes in the form of an ar or in the form of a vr right. you can look into a mobile screen and then effectively apply makeup and then figure out stuff like that right so definitely it's it's big on the customer facing side if from uh, from the manufacturing side i think uh, i think the way i would look at it is the ar uh, vr is a part of what is called as the industry 4.0 right and industry 4.0 is not just about ar vr it also has big data it also has uh, cloud computer it also has robotics it also has uh, you know 3d printing uh, and so on so forth so i think it's um, i think that aspect of uh, the industry 4.0 and what it is doing to supply chain and operations is really uh, fascinating and right. today i think it's difficult for uh, you to be in supply chain and ignore any of these uh, aspects specifically air we are i'm sure there are there are very very many small but beautiful applications that that comes up uh, uh, comes up today um, it could okay. be the domain of safety i can i can give an example see one of the things that we are we are trying to do is if you just imagine if you, if you are having a mission and then you are worried about as an as an employee who is working in the mission you are worried about uh, what are the risks that exist in the mission today your augmented reality can actually when you run your mobile screen over the mission can actually point out where are the pinch points where are the conveyors where is the risk etc right so even right. application of that nature can definitely um, uh, be exploited in the in the domain of operations and supply chain but there okay. are there are far more fascinating aspects like i said the 3d printing can uh, can right. really change the way you manage tires and inventories robotics is anyway already changing the way people are deployed in the uh, in the shop floor data sure. analytics can give fast amount of efficiencies uh, that okay. that are hidden today uh, so so i think the the area of technology is uh, super fascinating as far as supply chain and operations is concerned all right today if you're building a factory if you're building a warehouse it's not possible that you you're thinking of that in a traditional way right Amazon is probably the biggest company in the world right now it's a hardcore supply chain company it doesn't produce a product by itself it's purely up to supply chain <laughs> and uh, you look at the technology that right. that they invest in you go walk into an Amazon warehouse i think it is it's all like a sci-fi movie things right. going around everywhere etc so i think technology in supply chain is 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 too right. integral right. now to even be Uh, right you are not in the same breath you are absolutely right in this manner because the thing is you know i sometimes wonder like technology have no have left no possible door to enter in so technology yeah. is into any any domain that we thinks of so the thing is uh, you know earlier in earlier times maybe 20 years back so there was no like i, I don't think that there must be such technologies that people you know in operations department must think of that we can include this we can include that because that time there was no scope of technology in that manner so the thing is what is you know aspiring about all of this so i'm sure about it that the future of the industry 4.0 that you told to us the big data the robotics path the ar vr so the future is green in the technology segment so what could be the possible like you you already told that uh, the possible uh, industry 4.0 could you know make a particular operations department in a challenging manner also so it's the ethical way how you use it so i think you are absolutely right in that manner so before you know we conclude this so the thing is the future the by mr by mr ron so the thing is the future of this uh, industry 4.0 is green yet there are definitely ethical and moral values how a, how an organization seeks to the technology into the supply chain management so just to conclude that i just i think i spoke a little bit but uh, <laughs> well i think uh, so is there anything else you want to tell to the all lovely audience that uh, no, regarding uh, technology path
regarding the technology part see i think technology is um, uh, see maybe maybe the way way to look at it is i think supply chain operational uh, historically um, has been an area where uh, where if you have to work in a factory let's say you can effectively be uh, educated to the level of maybe a 10th pass or a 12th pass and then you can get into a factory operations because you are expected to kind of do something that was at one point of time monotonous and repetitive i think what technology is doing today is it is upskilling everybody and the jobs in supply chain are are changing it's not that you would at one point of time i think if you could kind of run supply chain with people with a with a, a mindset of being uh, operational and just execution centric today i think you will find more and more companies running supply chain and operations by virtue of very brilliant minds operating uh, the space of how do you uh, how do you run operations and supply chain so the the skilling level to be a part of supply chain is growing which also right. means that if you are interested in supply chain as a career you get yourself skilled and 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 have the pension for uh, technology and and, uh, and 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 the competence that's needed but also that because we are in that sort of a space the kind of talent that is getting attracted into supply chain given the opportunity to exhibit their uh, skill is also increasing right. so i think supply chain from that point of view is changing into an into a space where you would find more and more exciting talent kind of come into the space and and it can only be great uh, right. overall for the supply chain right. so as you are good in people management and you was you you know i was you know keeping my ears open to, throughout this particular podcast session so i was listening to you very carefully that you were saying that you sometimes be an hr itself so what you know just uh, for the sake of audience so what do you want to suggest to those people who wants to pursue their career in operations department and wants themselves to get recruited by by any firm and under this operations department and get selected like you know uh, a supply chain management or supply chain manager or some sort of something so what opinions do you want to give to the, those people i think i think like you i think just tying back to your initial question right i think supply chain is still a largely a not so well understood see if, if i walk into anybody and talk about marketing it is it is impossible that the guy has not heard about marketing right it's advertisement is all around you so it's it's <laughs> difficult to miss it right but when you speak to them on the word of supply chain it is not necessary that everybody relates does it have any more value i think there there could be some amount of confusion okay so, uh, so i think i think some of us who are in this field have the responsibility of creating that awareness so i'm very happy i'm sitting here i'm doing this and people see the relevance to it uh, and if if they if um, if they pick up something out of it it's great so i think it's important to Uh, important that people realize this over a period of time uh, so that we uh, we we do not have that uh, surprise about what a supply chain is uh, going forward right um, and 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 if you are interested once you once this information reaches you this knowledge reaches you when when you are interested i think it's more about um, more about having the knowledge of the basic knowledge of what uh, a supply chain uh, can do and to see whether it fits with your uh, aspirations and character as a person and in terms of how you want to spend your career and what you want to spend influencing it many times in career uh, what happens is that you would get into it with a with a with not all knowledge or an awareness with you right so you get into it as a leap of faith that okay this is you see role models you see people you you hear good stuff happening you see companies like amazon you get into it and then um i think more than whether you find a passion or not i think you find what is good about it okay. like we discussed on covid uh, right so it's it's a it's a pandemic but you can you can put a good spin on it in terms of what good it does to you so every career is like that be it supply chain or be it something else when you enter into something uh, you don't necessarily need to have a passion but i think when you do enough of work when you learn enough about it when you contribute it you naturally get into a stage where your expertise gives you the the motivation to to kind of do it so so if you pick the field 
have the basic knowledge and awareness to get into it but once you get into it have the patience to build that expertise and when you do that i think i think you will eventually end up like me loving it well thank you so much for giving so much advice and i'm sure this must be so much insightful to the viewers who are currently watching this video if they are finding this video informative in any context so just put just hit on the like button and subscribe this particular youtube channel and also don't forget to share this video to the to your colleagues to your friends to your family if they are interested to join operations department as in career so i think well uh, so i think let's call it a day and uh, before we end this uh, particular session i just want to thank you for coming on board with us sparing time out of l'oreal <laughs> so well Uh, so, do you want to sp uh, speak anything before we end? I think I think I think it's, this conversation was really great. Uh, thank you to Grow Junction and to you for uh, being an absolutely awesome host. I know you guys are doing some great work uh, in this field. I'm quite uh, happy to be uh, um, to be associated in a very small way through this uh, chat. Uh, it was a pleasure today. Well, thank you so much.